So in one way, Great Expectations has a very specific historical setting, a very specific geographical setting in the marshes of uh, Kent and then, and then in London. But it's one that's constantly filtered through the prism of Pip's consciousness. And what you see there is a very strange, often uncanny, uh, set of forces at work, full of strange repetitions and hauntings and doublings. So Great Expectations has a very complex relationship to, to time and to the past. If you think of Miss Havisham, for example, she's somebody who wants to control time. She wants to arrest everything at a particular moment. All the clocks have been stopped at the moment that she's abandoned. And she wants never to have to progress forward. And that creates this weird, uncanny space, deeply kind of gothic space, that erupts within the book so that suddenly Pip, you know, who's progressing onwards in his childhood, is suddenly pulled back to this strange, archaic, traumatic past. That's Miss Havisham's. In the course of the book, you see Pip constantly returning to Satis House, constantly going back there. Uh, and that's a double repetition. It's both that Miss Havisham can't move on, but somehow Pip can never move on. And so he constantly returns there and returns there in order, he hopes, to move on, to move on to some sexual fulfilment with Estella. But as far as we know, there is no sexual fulfilment in this book. It's full of unconsummated relationships. And the symbol of that, above all, is Miss Havisham's house and Pip's compulsive repetitions uh, in his coming back to it. So repetition is everywhere in uh, Great Expectations. Because all the events of the book we see through Pip's consciousness, it means that we get a pattern in the book of um, Pip constantly seeking to break out or move forward in his life and failing, constantly failing. He seems to find himself again and again in remarkably similar scenes. And so you find that too in the way that the novel is narrated. So that often there are moments when Pip, for example, the moment he sees Miss Havisham for the first time, there's an incantatory, repetitious quality to the way that he uh, represents that to us. And it's as if the most new thing, he's never seen anything like Miss Havisham, it's the most shocking, strange thing for a boy from the forge to see, somehow needs to be caught and reprised within this kind of writing that takes you back to something that's already existing. Uh, and so, so the her presence reminds him of things he's seen before, it reminds him of seeing um, a corpse in the church or a waxwork at the fair. And that can stand as a kind of symbol for a much deeper pattern in the book of narrative repetition. So it's both a repetition in language, but also a deeper uh, repetition within plot and narration. So one more thing that the Gothic allows Dickens to, to do in Great Expectations is to explore a deep violence that often seems to saturate or fill the erotic relationships in the book. So Miss Havisham we know has been violently betrayed, but like so many of the victims of the book, she in her turn becomes an oppressor. That's also the case about Pip, who's a victim, we feel sorry for him early on, but he also can be very cruel to others like Joe. It's also true about Magwitch, it's also true about Estella. And you see that in almost all the erotic and sexual and romantic relationships of the book. People often think of it as a romantic novel, uh, and many adaptations on, in film and elsewhere tend to stress the relationship of Pip and Estella. But in many ways, the relationship of Estella and Miss Havisham is equally interesting. So same-sex desire uh, can be as important as, as that between two people of, of different sexes. And that clearly, in a way, Miss Havisham is in love with Estella, um, and that, that, that is one of many uh, kind of very uh, unexpected things to find in a Victorian novel. We find out at the end of the book, for example, that Estella is the, is the daughter of Magwitch. Pip is a kind of adopted son of Magwitch. So there's a way in which not only is that a perverse relationship in which Estella seems to take pleasure in causing pain to Pip, and Pip maybe enjoys the pain that she causes him, it's also, we find out quite late, almost like an incestuous relationship too. And that's quite a deep pattern in the book one in which um, eroticism and violence are blended together. So many of those threads come together in Miss Havisham and that strange, weird, gothic mansion that she lives in. Uh, and that releases all this gothic energy around perversity and violence and sexual desire 
um, that is one of the structuring devices of the whole book. There are several moments of enormous psychological stress for Pip. The moment when he first goes to Satie's house. Uh, the moment later when Miss Havisham sets herself on fire and Pip has to wrestle with her. Again, it's almost like a scene of sexual violence, almost like a rape scene. And then again, climactically, the moment that he's captured by Orlick, who's his great rival and somehow a strange double of his, uh, and imprisoned at the lime kiln. And his whole life is at stake at that moment. And at that moment, it's like his whole identity seems to, to disappear or to be vulnerable. And Orlick seems, blames him for uh, all the things that Orlick himself has done. So there you see, at moments of the greatest psychological stress, both that Gothic motif of imprisonment but also the Gothic motif of doubling, both of them deployed to explore the most extreme kinds of psychological dislocation and suffering. The high point of the Gothic novel, or the first high point, is in the late 18th, early 19th century. And then the mid-Victorians feel that this is a slightly archaic, old-fashioned kind of form. So there's a way in which the Gothic goes underground, as it were, you then get a big revival of it later in the century. But at the same time, it's constantly present uh, in novels like Jane Eyre, in Oliver Twist, in Great Expectations, in Barnaby Rudge, in many of the major Victorian novels. And it's like the, the possibility is that at any moment within a realistic, normal, everyday world, any door might suddenly open into a Gothic nightmare. So the, the Gothic becomes a key prism by which the sheer strangeness of the Victorian city is viewed. <laughs>